Thank you very much, John. It's a privilege and honor to be here and speak, speak today. So uh, what I'm going to talk about, about today, it's a, a relatively recent research uh, um, program in my group on flexible and stretchable bioelectronics. And uh, it is thought that uh, in not so far future, quite a few of the diseases and chronic conditions will be treated by uh, bioelectronics. So of course, um, we already use uh, electrical stimuli to treat uh, conditions like Parkinson, but uh, here it's a, <coughs> a scheme, summary scheme from a recent paper that actually summarizes uh, uh, what is in development today across a whole range of the biomedical applications for stretchable and flexible electronics from uh, all sorts of uh, wearable bioelectronics in forms of the very thin, flexible um, patches on the skin, like a plasters, will, will, which will incorporate sensors and some other devices, to tiny implantable devices uh, and uh, confo conformal devices for heart on the brain that will treat all sorts of di diseases like epilepsy. Um, so this is a research area that is expanding very rapidly at the moment. And here I have just one of such examples of on um, integrated epidermal electronic system, systems which include uh, all sorts of the sensors like uh, strain sensors, temperature sensors, uh, and other electronic components integrated onto uh, flexible substrates uh, that can be used as, a, as a patches or uh, temporary tattoos on the skin, for example. So in most of those examples, however, the <coughs> active electronic materials that are used are still conventional organic or semiconducting materials, such as silicon or gold electrodes. And the problem with that is that actually they are intrinsically rigid materials. And uh, what they do now is they actually just manufacture those materials in different fashion, for example, by ultra thinly slicing silicons to make it conformal and, and flexible and stretch and, and flexible, or making gold in all sorts of um, um, different fabrication uh, techniques to, like, uh, to make it in uh, wavy structures or freckle structures, so they are forms that so they can actually stretch with the stretchable substrates. So in contrast to that, uh, polymer bio bioelectronics, it's based on the organic conducting polymers or sometimes called conducting plastic materials uh, that are a base today for uh, all sorts of uh, thin film uh, flexible electronics uh, <coughs> devices such as uh, uh, those uh, tr uh, uh, tr uh, transistors or light emitting diodes shown uh, here. So the properties of these materials is that they can be actually reversibly transformed from insulating to electrically conducting states, but also more importantly, the electrical, optical, and other properties can be actually modulated or tuned by chemistry. Um, so this is where a research of my group fits in. Uh, so basically we are developing novel materials, polymer electronic materials, that will hopefully help to underpin this development in uh, uh, polymer bio bioelectronics. So the vision here is to make materials that are intrinsically stretchable, self-healing, adhesive, and conducting. So basically all in one single polymeric material. So we hope to make them multifunctional and also uh, to make them on such a way that they can be uh, dissolved and therefore solution process, making them into very uh, inexpensive devices. So uh, conducting polymers are usually confined to surfaces. So we started with looking into, uh, into uh, uh, stimuli responsive, responsive biointerfaces based on these materials, uh, because uh, to, uh, as, as, as a way of controlling the interactions in between the biomolecules or cells and the surfaces. So the idea is quite simple one. So we have uh, those materials on the surfaces, and then we actually modify them with these uh, long uh, polymeric chains that can be responsive to various stimuli, or <coughs> even electrical stimuli generated by conducting polymers themselves, when they will switch, a surf switch, uh, switch their conformations, switch their shapes, which will make these materials to switch electrical properties as well as some other properties. Our, we can extend this vision further to actually uh, functionalize those, uh, what we call brushes, molecular brushes, with uh, uh, signaling uh, molecules to cells so that we can 
uh, we can talk to cells and so on. And we can also use this uh, idea of stimulating or switching behavior, so it's not working, <laughs> um, on those brushes to actually hide or, or display these uh, uh, cell signaling motifs on the surfaces. So here is uh, uh, some examples of what, what we have achieved so far. Um, we have actually grafted all sorts of um, such molecular brushes on conducting polymer surfaces that are responsive to change in acidity of the environment or salt concentrations or, or temperature, which uh, in turn um, <coughs> again switches the uh, state of those brushes and then in turn uh, changes the properties of the surfaces like conductivity or um, some other properties of the surface. So this is one, one, sort, one group of examples and then in other, for example, we can change the surface hydrophobicity by again uh, suitably designing those brushes so they can switch uh, upon um, applying a very small potential on the surface. Uh, so I have had there one minute. <laughs> uh, so we have done a whole range of cell studies on such surfaces which will show that we can actually uh, we, we can design compositions of such brushes to actually make them fully uh, self-adhesive or fully self-non-adhesive or cell-repellent and anything in between. Or we can graph them with the uh, cell-adhesive peptides to make non-adhesive non substrates to again cell-adhesive substrates. So this is just on the surfaces. We can make those materials in all sorts of the other formats. For example, we use a technique called electro spinning to make uh, those uh, microfiber mates of those materials. So they are made on the, of the rubber, electro spinning rubber, and then coating and conducting polymers, making them into such um, microfiber mates, which currently we are exploring with a <coughs> group uh, called in collaboration with a group at Harvard for uh, sensing the um, simultaneous uh, uh, beating of the heart cells. So we can make them hydrophilic, but again, modify them with hydrophilic brushes. And uh, <clears throat> just, I would like just very briefly to show you actually that we can make those materials multifunctional. And how we do this, we actually uh, make them by using uh, blocks, which where each block uh, has uh, carry different functionality. So for example, we can have uh, two blocks where one block will be responsible to make material soluble, while other one would make it <coughs> to talk to the cells you, uh, by using these uh, cell adhesive peptides. So we have made actually a whole range of such uh, Lego blocks, and they are indeed soluble, so we have solution process them in uh, such uh, fiber mates and we have shown that we can use such substrate to culture uh, these three types of the human cells. So um, where we are heading uh, from here, it's actually we would like to extend this principle of grafting uh, such materials to make them adhesive and self-healing. And this is recently funded uh, Marsden project, so we are just a couple of months into that. But we have some preliminary results with which were shown that we can actually indeed graft adhesive brushes from the con uh, photoluminescent con conju conjugated polymers in this case, making them uh, sticky and, uh, and uh, flexible and still photoluminescent. Or we can <laughs> make, in, in, in first instance, we made um, uh, blends of uh, conducting polymers with self-healing polymers, where we show that they can be, uh, of course, conducting. And then after um, cutting, do phys physically cutting those materials, we can actually self-heal them. This is after, after 30 minutes of self-healing, after which they recover um, a great deal of their electrical and mechanical uh, properties. So I think that's all. In summary, we can <coughs> make conducting polymers, which can be used as dynamic biointerfaces tailor functionality, solution processable <coughs> with designer mechanical properties. So we hope that will open a whole range of, a range of possibilities <coughs> in bioelectronics. And I'm really um, uh, very grateful to my research group and whole range of collaborators. This research area, it's, it's highly interdisciplinary. And uh, we are looking to uh, collaborate more with biologists, medical scientists, uh, engineers, and so on. So if you're interested, please come to talk to me about that. Thank you very much.